Hi, this is Kevin Gormley, and today I'm going to be talking about why Warren Buffett probably pays less of a tax percentage than you do, as well as I do. And so uh, I'm Kevin Gormley. I'm a CPA that does financial planning. Um, I uh, do some tax work, but I would uh, implore you that if you're interested in these strategies to dig a little bit deeper. We're just going to be scratching the surface, and I wanted to make something that just gets the strategies across as opposed to, you know, uh, diving into the tax law and putting everyone to sleep. So if you're a, a person who does tax and, you know, you kind of hear the way I've, uh, I've, I've expressed things, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get some feedback on that, but I want to make this easy to understand. So uh, let's talk about Warren Buffett. He, he, every year there's an article that says he pays less of a tax percentage than his secretary. Now he does pay a lot of tax dollars. Uh, he probably is among uh, the top few people in the country with the amount of dollars they pay but he does pay a much lower percentage. Uh, last time it was looked at, it was between 17 and 18%. So the first concept, okay, we're going to do three things here. The first concept is this earned income versus unearned income. And that's kind of tax speak. So let's put it more in human speak. Uh, this is like how much money you get from your job or if, if you're a partner in a, in a firm, a law firm or something. This is the amount of money that you get paid. It comes either on a Form W-2 this time of year or it comes on a, a 1099 if you're a, a contractor type person. If you're a partner, you get it on Form K-1. But this is just the money that flows to you from your job. And so there are some opportunities here to defer some of the money but, but you really get on the, the real progressive uh, income tax system when you earn your money. And so that's where you go from 10%, 15%, 18%, 25 all the way up to 39.6, plus some other bonus taxes. So that's the reason why I implore people to try to put as much money as you can in your 401k, simple SEPs, or other uh, things. Okay, So this is the money that flows to you from your job. This unearned income is is basically when you have a pile of money and you can invest it and so how do you get from here to here well it, it, it's it, it goes slowly if you're earning a good living and you need to live off your money you're, you're gonna have to spend it but whatever you can save um, and and here we're talking about a taxable account uh, when I say that you have a pile of money and this pile of money is taxed differently than money you earn from your job so what Warren Buffett has is he has a pile of money, a big pile. And uh, in the book Snowball, they talked about how the pile just gets bigger and bigger. Um, you know, he was always, uh, I think, pretty wealthy. But anyway, so he has this big pile of money in the form of Berkshire Hathaway stock. And so because he knows tax law and he knows the system, by having all this money in Berkshire Hathaway stock, it doesn't pay a dividend. And guess what? All of these tax rates, or many of these tax rates with investments, are preferenced items. And preference is a fancy way of saying they have a better tax uh, um, uh, ladder than the ladder over here. So, so when Warren sells Berkshire Hathaway stock, he, he probably pays 20% on that capital gains. Now, you can go anywhere from zero percent on capital gain ladder to 15% on the ladder to 20%. And so he's probably paying 20% when he sells Berkshire Hathaway. But the issue is all the money that's in Berkshire Hathaway and being invested and that money can grow, that's called unrealized capital gains, not taxed. Good system. Own a company for a long period of time. It goes up in value. You don't have to pay any tax. So that's the first reason why, is that, that Warren is not being, as a matter of fact, his income, I think, with Berkshire Hathaway is maybe $100,000 a year. It's not high at all. Um, the nature and the timing. Okay, so again, when you're in this category and you're getting paid, there's not much you can do about the nature and the timing. It comes to you every two weeks or every month. You pay your tax. As a matter of fact, you send it to the IRS every time you get a paycheck if you're a Form W-2 employee. When, when, you're, when you're in the situation where you have investment money, you, you really can decide on how you want to play, uh, and, and I don't want to call it a game because it's not really a game, but how you want to uh, set up your financial affairs to pay less tax. And so if you put um, 
uh, equities or stocks or stock funds into a taxable account if you use uh, certain types of partnerships like master limited partnerships if you use rental real estate in a taxable account um, you are setting up the system so you can decide a little bit more about the nature and and sometimes the timing if it's if it's with capital gains and so that's what Warren Buffett does he decides when to sell Berkshire Hathaway if he wants to sell Berkshire Hathaway he also has a team of accountants we all know that but um, when you are an investor as opposed to a worker you can control the nature and the timing at least somewhat the third thing is knowledge of accounting and tax and by the way I'm not advocating anyone go back to school or, or really get a deep dive study in, in accounting and tax if you do and you're sick like me I feel very sorry for you but the thing uh, that I that I realized when I read the book many years ago is that that Buffett is actually a genius when it comes to um, accounting when it comes to taxation and 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 I don't want to get political here I know um, you know he's advocated now that 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 wealthy people aren't paying his fair share well it really appears to me uh, and this is a commentary on my part and opinion if you will that Warren Buffett set up his financial life understanding these concepts and now he's so wealthy that yeah it's easy to say I wish I could pay more tax and he can always send it in um, but the the one example I will give you about his knowledge is that early on he discovered um, first of all if you pay a lot of tax you don't get to keep a lot of your money but he discovered insurance companies and and some of the first income some of the first companies that he worked with and bought and when he established Berkshire Hathaway are insurance companies now why is that why are they so exciting to him well you can get paid uh, premiums people take insurance they send you their premiums every every month and you can kind of realize when you're gonna have to pay out um, you know about how much you're gonna have to pay out every quarter now uh, you know they always say that uh, an insurance company knows how many people are gonna die but they don't know who but you know I mean there can be some catastrophic events but pretty much when Warren gets those premiums what does he do he invests the money what happens when he makes money well he gets to keep money in reserve and so he can build up a really nice reserve and I'm not gonna say that I'm an insurance accountant but he can build up a reserve that he needs to pay out claims and so Warren very early found that by keeping it in this whole system it's like a tax deferral system and so there's other things that he did um, in his uh, in investing career where you know he used exchanges uh, of property and all these other things and I won't get into it because I'm going to put you to sleep now but all I would say is having an understanding even if it's just strategic you don't have to get down to the tactics but having an understanding of the tax law having an understanding of the fact that you sometimes can uh, look at the nature at least the nature and get tax preference items and sometimes you can control the timing even when you realize taxable gains and try to get more money either into the unearned income category um, or defer money and then when you start taking your money out when you're in retirement once again this thing is very important because if you have five million dollars in an IRA and you need to take out a ton every year guess what you're back pretty much to the rules of getting whacked for every dollar you take out so anyway uh, hopefully this was somewhat provoking but um, I I'm happy to speak with anybody about these strategies and we do have a white paper that's available it's uh, about 25 pages 30 something when you look at the appendix which is called the roadmap to investing for the high income investor and it's all about trying to help people that are making a lot of money get money from here into here and build enough money so they can uh, be financially independent so again Kevin Gormley leading edge financial planning a CPA that does financial planning thanks so much for listening